Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I wanted to just put together a quick video about some tips and tricks when it comes to bolting. Um, it's a question that comes up a lot, especially for newer users, uh, you know, how to create a manual bolt group, not just for something simple like through two plates, but especially when we get into situations like bolting through a tube or bolting to just one wall of a tube, um, creating staggered bolt groups or stud groups. Um, so hopefully I can give a couple of tips today. Uh, it's not going to be an exhaustive video of all of the features of creating manual bolts, but just enough to kind of give you a good foundation to start from. So I already have two plates modeled in here. They're an inch thick, just back to back. I already have my bolt properties window open, which you can open just by double clicking on the bolt button or you can hold shift and click on the bolt button. I would do the same thing. Um, I don't have any values in here right now except the diameter and the grade, and we're just gonna start with this. So when you go to create a bolt group, you pick the parts you're trying to bolt together, you middle mouse click, you pick where they start, and then which direction they should grow. Um, a bolt group has two handles, just like a beam does. So that second handle is the direction the group should grow. So for now, I'm just gonna pick on the other edge of the plate. So what I get to begin with is a bolt that looks like it fails, and the reason for that is because it's right there on the edge, so it's not going through um, you know, enough meat or enough material there at the end. Uh, it's simple enough to fix. What I'll do is I'll change my offset, so you have a start handle and an end handle to a bolt group. That, di that direction from start to end is always going to be X. So if I need to offset something, um, what I'll do here is say in the direction X from the start handle, I want, say, an inch and a half edge. I'll modify that, and then as you can see, the bolt completes itself. Now, if I'm trying to grow this bolt group, um, what I want to do is add spacing in the X direction. So I'll go to my bolt distance X field, and what, it, what this calls for is the number of spaces and then the distance of that space. So you can say something like seven spaces at three inches or seven asterisk three. Now, what I get is seven spaces at three inches. You can also do something staggered. So I could do like four, space three, space four, space five. Each space is a separator. So when I hit modify, what I'll get is a four inch gap, a three inch gap, a four inch gap, and a five inch gap. Okay, so you can do that with a bolt group. Um, so once I get my distance X, I can also put a distance Y, which is the inverse of the X. So if I need to have a four inch gauge, I can put that in here and then modify the group to get what you might see for like bolting a flange or something like that. Okay, so the direction of this bolt group again is based on the handle. So if I take this bolt group out and I use the same exact settings to bolt these two plates together, but instead I change my handle location, you can see how the bolt group now grows in this direction. So it's pretty easy to control how your bolts get oriented. If you ever have a bolt group that when you're trying to create it, the rotation is wrong, like you might go ahead and create a bolt group and it comes in something like this. You haven't necessarily done anything wrong, it's just that the rotation is off. So all you need to do is change your rotation from front to top or top to below or something like that, and what you'll get is a bolt group that flips and rotates into the proper position. Now there are times where you have to create something like a staggered bolt group. Now there are ways you can come in here and change your bolt group shape from an array to an XY list. However, I find it much easier to simply create an array like this, then switch to my single bolt selection icon, and then go through and delete the bolts that I don't need, because now I can select them individually. And now I've created a staggered bolt group. If I switch back to the regular bolt selection, this does highlight as a group. And if I double click or use the get button, we can see that Tecla converts this into an XY list. So I don't need to know the format. I can simply delete the bolts I don't want. Tecla converts and creates the format for for me. Now for bolting through something like a tube, let me go ahead and reset that. Um, when I go to bolt something like a plate to a tube, a lot of the same rules apply. So I'll go in here and I'll set my edge distance right away. I'll activate the bolt tool, pick the two parts and trying to bolt together, and then pick two points for uh, my start handle and my direction. And I'll get a bolt. Now this bolt is currently going through one side of the tube. Now there might be a situation where I need to bolt through the whole tube. If that's the case, the best thing you can do, your best results you'll have is if you put those handles in the center of the thing you're trying to bolt through. So rather than keeping them out here on the face, recreate that bolt or move those handles down to the center of the tube. Now, 
the bolt has started to fail, but there's a reason for that. When you create a bolt group, Tekla tries to find the outside faces. It tries to find the grip of the thing you're bolting to, and you can control that value. You can control it through this cut length field. Cut length is basically your grip distance. How far will Tekla look to find a grip? Right now it's set to four inches. That distance is centered on the handle. So what that's doing is looking two inches up and two inches down. Now with a tube, this tube is an eight inch uh, square HSS. So I need at least four inches in each direction for a total of eight plus the plate. I'm going to need like eight and a half, maybe nine. So let me change that. I'll change that cut length to nine inches and modify the bolt. And you can see how now it bolts through the tube and the plate. Now, if I take those handles and I move them back to where they were, what will happen is the bolt now only goes through the one wall. And that's because even though my cut length is nine inches still, it's only looking four and a half inches in each direction. That nine inches is centered on the handles. With an eight inch tube, having the bolt handles out on the face, that's not going to work. So I would need at least 16, 17 inches to go eight inches down to cover the whole tube, plus then the eight inches in the other direction, which I don't even need. So cut length and the handle location go hand in hand for trying to bolt through parts. Very important to remember. Now, one last thing I want to talk about is splitting bolt groups. So there are situations where you have something like this, where you have a plate crossing over some beam flanges or something like that to create a splice. And you need to have technically two separate bolt groups, one for uh, bolting through this side and one through for bolting through this side. You can use the bolt tool um, to do that all at once. So if I go ahead and set this back up again to do equally spaced bolts, um, four inch center to center, uh, what I do is pick the main part first, like the continuous plate first. So that's like the primary thing I'm bolting to. Then I can pick the other plates, middle mouse click and pick my start handle and my direction. So Tekla has gone, recognized the fact that I'm going through two separate plates and it has gone ahead and split the group for me, which is pretty awesome. But now that this is in here as a split group, they are now handled as two separate entities. So if I double click on one, I'm getting properties. It's only three spaces at three. If I double click on the other, I'm getting a, a, a really large offset distance. So it didn't change the handles for me. It just changed the numbers that were required. So if something happens where I need to change like the center to center distance from four inches to five and a half, uh, I can't just do that with one group. Now I have to do this individually. So and another tool that a lot of people don't know about is this tool called AutoBolt. It's in the Applications and Components catalog. AutoBolt is set up a lot like a regular bolt tool, but it's smarter. It will automatically find the right plane so you don't have to worry about rotation. And then when I go ahead and apply it to multiple parts like this, it's also smart enough to split the bolt groups. So if let me change my selection here, uh, you can see how it's two separate bolt groups, but it remains a component, which means I can highlight the overall group and I can interact with that group as one entity. And it's still smart enough to keep them as two separate bolt groups. So this is definitely a better tool for handling more complicated groups. The regular bolt tool works great, but this one um, is a little bit more robust. So hopefully, um, if you had some, some questions or issues with putting in bolts, this makes things a little bit clearer for you. As always, if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to your local help desk. And again, thanks for watching.